Hey everybody, welcome to another Goodie Reader comparison video. My name is Michael. This is Peter. Today we're going to show you the Kobo Aura versus the Kobo Aura HD. Now you might notice the diminutive size of the Kobo Aura. It's because it's 6 inches versus the 6.8 inches display screen here. Now the Kobo Aura HD has 1440 by 1080 for the resolution, while the Kobo Aura 6 inch has 1024 by 768. They both have the same 1 gigahertz CPU processor, the same RAM, 4 gigs of storage on each, and they both have expandable memory, each up to 32 gigs, a front facing display light, so it has a front lit display, and they both last about 2 months of usage. Although these both are the Kobo Aura devices with different screen sizes, they don't really look like the same at all, nor are they built the same. You'll see on the Kobo Aura 6 inch model, the light catches the exact same on the bezel as it does on the screen. This is because it is 100% flat. And they've done this to kind of stray away from the old technology of the big bulky thick devices with sunken screens as you can see here. So. Yeah, they've, they've gone with a capacitive touch screen display. It's actually multi-touch, whereas all prior models are not multi-touch. And so this really comes across and is very hev evident in ebooks, in the web browsing experience, and a whole lot more. And we'll show you this as the video progresses. You'll see these really thick, obvious ridges. Very artistic, very nice. However, you do get a very thick device afterwards. It results in a lot of height. Whereas it almost looks like they're not even there on the aura till you tilt it to catch some light. Then you see the subtle ridges just like the aura HD. But instead it's a little bit different and the device remains quite thin. On each device we have micro USB ports, micro SD card slots, and a little circle for hard resets as outlined in the documentation that comes with the devices clean on each side on the left clean on each side on the right and the top is where you'll find your power buttons status indicator light on the Aura HD and the power buttons as well alright I think next we're going to take a look at the software experience both screens, the main UI is relatively the same. They've, they've carried it over. There's a few subtle changes. You notice here, instead of reading life on the HD, on the, just the regular Aura, here it's known as extras, reading stats and awards. It's basically the same thing. One of the few additions to the main interface here is the inclusion of articles from Pocket. Now, par Pocket, formerly Read It Later, is a Read It Later service, much along the similar vein as Instapaper and things like that. Pocket has integration for both Android and iOS. It can plug into Flipboard, Pulse, uh, your email, Facebook, Twitter, and a lot of other article-related services. What you can do is you have to register a Pocket account on here and then you could uh, use your Android or iOS device or email or whatever to have articles sent to your Read It Later account and then pull them into here. What this does is it takes articles and puts them in a very ebook friendly format. You have control over the fonts as you see here. You can favorite, archive, or delete. If you wanted to, you could basically have a year's worth of goodie reader articles on here, and then while you're traveling and outside of a Wi-Fi zone, you can get caught up on all the latest news. Uh, it's very cool. It also has browser-based plugins as well, so you could have a lot of web pages just synced here, so you could, on a six-hour flight, read everything from like CNET and Goodie Reader and Ian Gadget and all the other major sites out there uh, on your e-reader. And we've heard from um, some leads at Kobo that the Aura HD and other e-readers will actually get uh, the firmware updates for the Pocket service at some point uh, during the year. So that's one of the, the big changes here. While we're on the main UI here, let's take a look at the bookstore. We're going to load up the storefront. What you see here is some features, suggested, top 50s, and then reading lists and most recent. They cha you can see the headers are a little bit different 
on each of these. This did undergo a update when we cracked the new one open today at uh, August 29, 2013. So we got a lot of similar things that the Aura 6 inch has, but not everything as we've just shown you the differences. So we're going to click on a couple books here to get a good idea of what it's like when you dive in. You got read preview, a little bit of a synopsis here, rating, and if you click that little side drop down you get add to wish list by now not interested so this is the store experience on both of these guys you do still get a little bit of a text heavy um, uh, layout here but not nearly as bad as the Kobo Glow because you do get some nice little thumbnails And why they keep it not so image heavy is because it is an e-reader, so they want to cut down on load times. As you can see, it's pretty quick. So that's the store experience. Okay, so uh, primarily you buy these devices to buy and read e-books. We showed you the, the store experience, but what is the actual reading experience like? Well, we're going to check out um, our main library shelf here. As you can see, that you can configure it show different things so show covers and list you can also do your archiving your collections new shelves and so on um, we're gonna just load up a book we're gonna load up a couple books one on each doesn't matter that they're um, doesn't they don't need to be the same book because we're not uh, focusing on the actual text differences we're, Michael's gonna show you a bunch of new differences that the aura has that the aura HD does not well, first of all, let's take a look at some of the software differences. And the Aura, the 6-inch version, has a ton of updates. And you'll notice that when you click the screen here, and you'll see this graph, and then this weird superimposed positioning here. If you just click on the graph, you get your reading life statistics. Next chapter, how many hours are left in the book. And then if you click here, you get beyond the book. And this is a new feature that's only in the Aura, but we were told that other e-readers, uh, such as their tablets and prior models, will get this update soon. Gives you an indication on the major characters and makes references to, you know, who exactly is Bilbo Baggins, because this book is primarily about him. You get some related products some about sections here. I was told that because the service really isn't live yet and this is only on pre-order and it's not even going to be shipping until what, like September, September 19th? September 19th, 20th, yeah. So we were told that the related products, there will be more of them showing up as can more consumers have these in their pocket as well as more of um, these will be populated. And what we were told is once more people have this, more words will be highlighted automatically. So this word will have a highlight that says Bilbo. You click on it and it would open this up here. So of course this is an early build, so not all the firmware is super polished yet, but those are some of the cool features that you can expect down the pipe. How is this relevant? Well, let's say you're reading a book and um, it's a fiction title, a paranormal romance, but they make reference to the Battle of Carthage. Now, if you were to just look up a word, say, in the dictionary, it may not totally tell you what was the Battle of Carthage, who were the major players, what exactly happened. But beyond the book, it would, tell, it would give you maybe other books. You know, this is, you know, a, a poet's rendition of the, of the battle. This is uh, someone who wrote a book just on that battle. So, and it would tell you who are the major players within that battle and stuff. So, it's very cool because it just goes beyond a, a word lookup, you know? What's the definition of this word? It doesn't really tell you too much, but if it could actually say, okay, here's different books in the Kobo bookstore that tell you all about it, it could lead to um, more buying dis decisions, more ebook discovery, more content. So I'm a huge fan of this option. But they both allow you a tremendous amount of flexibilities to augment the ebook experience. Yeah, hopefully that when this starts to um, get sold on a retail scale that uh, the Kobo or HD receives all of those great updates. You can see here the differences in the keyboard. You get 
a little bit wider here, so you end up getting an exclamation mark and an at symbol over here on the left. Whereas, you don't get that here. Oh, hope that doesn't make or break it for you guys. But, <laughs> um, oh, you also get a wider space bar. Ah. Yeah. A lot more screen here, so you do get a little bit more keys. So we're just making a note right now. You also see you can highlight things such as that. You also have um, text customization. If we go to the little A's, we're not going to go through every single one of these, but you can change the font face, uh, the size, margins, justification, everything changes live. You can even go to advanced and this will give you a before and after of what it's going to look like when you change the sharpness, the weight, and the font size. So this is really good to see what your text is going to look like once you change to what it was to what it's going to be. All right, when you're reading a book, you may encounter the situation where you see the flicker when you turn pages. Right. There was one right there. And probably every five or seven, there was another one right there. So every, every five pages on the Aura All HD. All right, let's flip a few pages here. I'm not seeing any full screen refreshes. The only thing you really see is the white of the background get ever so slightly grayed out. Very unnoticeable unless I've pretty much brought it to your attention right now. It doesn't refresh with the whole black blackout. Now, it only does a full page refresh every chapter. Right. So whether that chapter is 10, 20, 30, 50, or more, that's when you only encounter a full page refresh. And, exactly. and that's a, a new innovation uh, with the, the display screen. Now, one other thing that we want to uh, look at is the number of fonts. We kind of just showed you briefly here, but I kind of want to uh, show you it here because I want to let you know they've added a lot of dyslexic fonts here. So there's uh, a few of them here. But one thing that Kobo does is really cool is they allow you to sideload in your own fonts. So if you're not happy with the number of default fonts here, there's a font director in the e-reader. You plug it in your computer and you can sideload in your own fonts. Very cool. Right. You can also double finger swipe up to change the level of the glow light. And as you can see here, no such feature exists on the Kobo Aura HD. You do have to click the little sunshine there, click on brightness, then adjust with the slider bar. What's that, your like three level. different? That is th exactly three steps, whereas on this you can go, oh, I just, I want it a little darker. So then, there you go. Right, and this Up, is down. because of the capacitive touch screen display. And you would be very hard pressed, I don't think, have we ever seen a capacitive touch screen display on an e-reader? I don't believe so, especially one that's not flush with the bezel like this. Usually they're IR um, recognized right, right. side. And uh, yeah, so this is the first time that e-ink has released a commercially viable e-reader with this new display. So I'm going on about it because it's just simply it's amazing. It's awesome. Yeah. It, abso it, it absolutely awesome. Okay, one thing that we haven't looked at yet is the PDF experience. Now, PDFs since what, like the late 80s, right. <laughs> has been like all over the internet. So you'd be hard pressed not to find a PDF online. We have a monster's manual here and uh, we're just simply going to get to the right page and we'll show you the key differences uh, between the way that the rendering engine on the Aura handles it and the way it's handled on the Aura HD. Right. So you can see here on the Aura HD, once we get to a loaded page here, what am I doing? I'm trying to pinch and zoom, and it's recognizing it as a page turn. On the Aura, you can pinch and zoom, let go of your thumb, and actually still command the navigation. You can even go a step further and let go of your finger and catch the navigation, and it continues until you let go, and then it renders. Whereas on the Aura, you'll have to tap the middle of the screen, tap the little control pad here, Select your level of zoom. That's just another three steps. Let go, wait for it to render. Then you can move it around, just like you can on the 6-inch Aura, and everything's still really clear, but you don't get that pinch and zoom convenience. And people are just so used to tablets these days that allow you to pinch and zoom that they try to bring those same movements to an e-reader and often it's like why isn't this working exactly this works exactly the same as your iphone works right. pinching and zooming um moving around two fingers then dragging the one finger i mean 
this is probably the closest we've got ever to an e-reader mirroring the in daily interactions as a smartphone or a tablet. Right, and you can see that mini map pops up pretty much every time you pinch and zoom, whereas on this, you can double tap to kind of get out of everything and reflow, but then you're left with having to open up that bar, open up the zoom, and continue on. So very convenient on the Aura, not so much on the Aura HD. We're not sure if this will come to the Aura HD afterwards or not. It's kind of, uh, it's just a mystery. So hopefully they do something with that because that would make the Aura HD every bit as good as the brand new Aura. Okay, the last thing I want to show you is the web browsing experience. And um, you could see here that with uh, the Kobo Aura, it's under beta features. And the Aura HD, it's under extras. So they've basically taken the web browser out of as being an extra to be almost being experimental or beta. So it's almost like they took a final product and moved it backwards in time to beta. We, we await the day that Amazon finally stops listing its web browser as experimental as well. I don't think that day will ever come. We're at the, what, fifth generation already? Yep. Hopefully by the sixth or seventh they might say, I think you know the original what? Kindle was like 06, <laughs> right. 07. Hopefully one day they'll say, you know, I think we should just put the web browser on there as a finished program instead of <laughs> experimenting with it for eight years. All right, so we're going to call this up. Obviously, this loaded quicker because I typed it in faster, but yeah. they both load uh, very quickly. They're both on the same Wi-Fi signal. Now, one thing that you may notice is that if you have not done any internet tasks for like 10 minutes or so, uh, the Kobo e-readers, both of them, the o or the Aura and Aura HD, will automatically disable the Wi-Fi. So mm -hmm. you may have to go through about a 30-second connection process, and that's the same as if you're browsing a store to buy ebooks or browse the internet. So We've never been a fan of that. Yeah, I, I don't like it. I mean, I could see why to conserve battery life and maybe worth it, but I would love to see an option in the settings that, you know, has some sort of control over the internet timeout. Absolutely. There's none. So, so you'll see here that um, same kind of functionality with PDF on both of these. You will have to use this zoom bar on the Aura HD. On the Aura, you can use the zoom bar or you can pinch and zoom. It's still loading right now, so it takes a little bit of time, but once you have zoomed it in, everything gets to scale, and it's very, very responsive and very quick. Simply let it go on your favorite image, and it loads right up. Whereas the Aura HD, you will have to rely on this zoom bar. Okay, so here's my final thoughts. It seems as though that everything that basically the Aura HD can do, the Aura can do. There's a few software features beyond the book, Pocket, and things like that. But it seems to me that with one step, I can do things on here. The same tasks on the Aura HD require three steps. Right. And you saw that with PDFs, you saw that with like anything that re required um, internet or PDFs. I, I really would really recommend that if you're looking for a new e-reader, wait until about September 19th when these actually go on sale. The Aura is probably the best e-reader I've ever seen. Uh, the capacitive touchscreen display has not really been seen in an e-reader. Most are with IR. Um, Multi-touch display is awesome. I, I really dig changing the front light with two fingers as opposed so to like cool. having to, you know, go to a slider, hit a submenu, configure a setting, or, or, and whatnot. I, I totally dig the fact that I can just easily do it with the swipe of a finger. I really do also like the way that they have eliminated uh, ghosting and um, being able to eliminate every six turns, page turns, a full page refresh. I like it how it goes every chapter. I think that that just makes total and complete sense. I like the fact that the screen is totally flush with the bezel. I think it's an extremely awesome, um, you know, uh, evolutionary growth of what e-ink is doing. And you're going to actually see more e-readers in the future have this same type of flush screen with the bezel. So the Aura was the first to do it, but certainly not going to be the last. I'm going to, you're definitely going to see this in more e-readers going forward in the future. I would really recommend you comment on this video and let us know what your thoughts are between these two models. These 
The Aura hasn't really been around that long, but like six, seven months. The Aura HD, yeah, it's been around for about six or seven months. The Aura is actually, we're a month ahead of when it's even getting released. So we could see things change when it gets on retail shelves. All right, so this is gonna be hard to find at first because it's not gonna be all available in retail markets, but you can order it from shopyreaders.com. And um, yeah, so this has been our re comparison review of the Aura versus the Aura HD. For goodyreader.com, my name is Michael. This is Peter. Everybody take care.